for all of you wondering, Trout is not Groot's younger brother. channel welcome to another mighty mini monday all right so today's episode is a little bit deceiving and i say that because this episode's really about containers and what drives them so you might want to know why Trout has anything to do with containers Trout is a, a command on the linux terminal that will allow you to set the root directory for a process. Now, I'm, I don't actually recommend you using Trout by itself. And the reason I say that is because it's actually really difficult, it's a pain in the butt, and generally there's better options for it, like a full-fledged container. Um, it really did serve its purpose, and it really does have some useful cases. So if you'd like to stick around for that, please do. The other reason that I wanted to talk about Trout is that it one of the core technologies to containers themselves. So containers leverage what Trout does. It's just like uh, the FreeBSD jail command built on top of Trout and made it even more secure. So while it's not going to give you the security that a container does, it is fundamental to understand what it does to know how containers work. So I'm going to show you really more of why Trout is such a pain, but uh, also explain a little bit of what it does um, so that, you know, in the future, we have a little bit better understanding. All right. So. This is how Trout works very simplistically. Uh, when you log in, you probably uh, log into something like your file path is home. Uh, and then in my case, it's Merrick. And then you have, that's your root directory or your home directory. Now, uh, your root directory would be this right here. And it has uh, several things in it. One thing you could find is home is in the root directory, bin is in the root directory. There's, there's a lot of folders in the root directory, but the root directory is just the slash. What Trout does is uh, on my machine, I have a directory called home. <laughs> And what Trout is going to allow me to do is it's going to allow me to make the root directory, the slash, so there's nothing before the root directory. There's no pre-file system. There's no way to get back. You know how you can do uh, cd dot dot and get back a level? You can't go back past the root directory. That's the root. So what if we run Trout here, it's going to take this here, and make that our root. So it's going to, when you go to cd to slash cd to root, your root directory is going to be whatever's here. So let's say we have this file in here called uh, test. And you ran ls in root, you would get that test file would be displayed. So this is what Trout does. It changes your root directory to some directory in your file path, and you can tell it whatever you want. Now, this is great, and this works. This here works great. There's a couple problems. First, uh, you can actually escalate out of it if you're privileged. Um, but let's not focus on those problems. The, the real problem is it's not very usable, and I think that it's great as a build tool. Uh, I think that it's probably one of the best build tools out there. Um, and so by that, I mean, it will allow you to know that you've packaged every dependency when you went and packaged your the build of your thing. Because if you set your truth to an empty directory, 
you're going to have to populate it with everything you need and there's no missing dependency in your build. So things when you're going to build an RPM or a DEB, this, they can leverage this and they don't care about the extra security of a container because it's not a security thing. You're just wanting to make sure that you have all the packages you need. And this excels at that. So this is a great example of when to use it. Now, if you wanted to go and use it, I'm gonna show you why it's a little bit painful to use. Um, so I have this, you can see here, I have this uh, test root, and we're going to CD into it. Now, we wanna set root here, so we're going to do sudo root uh, home Merrick test root. I'm gonna ask for my password, and it's gonna say no bin bash. So by default, it's going to run bin bash there. Uh, well, bin bash doesn't exist there. Now I can copy bin bash over there, and that's great. So so now I've copied bin bash, and we can see it here, and we can look here. Bin and oh, one second. Uh, and we can see bash is in bin. The problem is bash has dependencies. And so to actually get this to run with bash, not only do we have to copy bash over, but we need to look at what dependencies bin bash has. And we need to copy all of its dependencies over. Again, this is why I think it's an excellent tool uh, an excellent piece of equipment for build systems because it's going to ensure that you have all your dependencies when you're packaging it up and there won't be any surprises. That being said, as a developer's tool, you need to wrap this in a lot of scripts to make it really useful so you can use it quickly. And then if you're wrapping this in a lot of scripts, you should just use containers because basically, um, while it gives you some more stuff, things like Podman or Docker give you all those scripts, that's what they do. So this is why I'm showing it to you because I actually wanna do containers the hardest way because that's what we do here is things the hardest way. And to do that, I just wanted to go a little background of some of the stuff that containers are going to do. And one of the things they do is give you this fake root. I'm gonna call it a fake root. It's a root that isn't actually the root of the file system. And I know this is super basic. Stick with me though, because you really need to understand this when we get further into containers the hardest way. And I love the theme and we're gonna stick with that. We're gonna do lots of things the absolute most difficult way. So if you wanted to get this to work, all you need to do is copy all of these things painfully over there and then you could troot and have bash running in Troot. Now, nothing else would be accessible because you just copied the bin stuff or the bash stuff. You'd have to copy your other stuff that you wanted to run in bash into this so that it could run. So again, not maybe not the most useful on a day-to-day -day as a developer tool. Again, I still think it's valid for packaging systems, but uh, yeah. As a developer, I have some videos coming up. These are leading into it. We're doing containers the hardest way. Containers the hardest way is gonna be really awesome because you're gonna understand what Docker is doing behind the scenes. When you build an OCI spec container, I mean, that is just building a spec and we're gonna do it by hand so we understand every single step that it does as well as it's gonna let you build better containers in the end. Then we're gonna use Docker to empower our development work style. I know I've done a whole bunch of DevOps here, but we're gonna focus a little bit. Uh, we still are doing the Kubeflow stuff and we're working on that, but we're gonna focus a little bit on how containers can actually bring benefits to you developers. Uh, where uh, some of this stuff where you wanna make sure that all of your stuff works and there's no dependencies missing, you can use containers to leverage that and build that way. And you can not only run test pipelines, but you can run your application on your machine in a container. And I'm gonna show you how to do that in from Visual Studio Code, uh, from the command line, 
And yeah, we're going to have a lot of fun and we're going to empower your development workflows. All right. If you like this video, make sure to hit the uh, like button and subscribe to it so that you can see future videos of things that we're doing here on this channel. This channel covers a lot of stuff from uh, development and DevOps. And I really look forward to sharing my knowledge. If you didn't like this video, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, stick around and see if these videos get any better for science.